The coronavirus pandemic is, unfortunately, still ongoing. Last week, I explained why and how we're manifesting this experience, both globally and individually. But this week, I'd like to tackle one of the stranger effects of this pandemic, hoarding behavior, specifically the hoarding of toilet paper. I mean, it doesn't really make any logical sense, does it? COVID-19 is not an intestinal virus. It doesn't give you diarrhea. It doesn't make you soil yourself. The symptoms are respiratory. So you sneeze and you cough and maybe you get a fever. No extra pooping is involved. And even if there was, it still wouldn't justify needing 200 times more toilet paper than usual. So why are so many people across the whole planet choosing to hoard toilet paper? While the foodstuffs we're hoarding differ from country to country and culture to culture, the whole world has one thing in common, the hoarding of freaking toilet paper. Why? This question was really bugging me, and I know I'm not the only one, so I set the intention to figure it out. And today, I'd like to share with you what I came up with. Maybe this will bring you some clarity, or maybe you've got your own theories about the causes of TP hoarding. To answer this question, we have to take a look at hoarding behavior in general and what toilet paper specifically represents. Why do people hoard at all? While every person is different, will have their own unique, specific reasons for doing what they do, we can look at the general energetic motivations of this type of behavior. Hoarding, first and foremost, is a response to fear. Again, the specific fears one is reacting to will differ from person to person, but overall, hoarding is a soothing behavior. It gives us a sense of control when we don't really feel like we have any. It's not a logical response. As we can see in this coronavirus situation, hoarding toilet paper specifically doesn't actually help. The average American uses about two rolls of toilet paper a week or a hundred rolls a year. So a big pack from Costco will generally last one person for six months. A family of four who stocks up on a thousand rolls of toilet paper is now set for two and a half years, not weeks, years. And at least in the U.S., this is a country that produces its own TP. In other words, it's not imported, and which doesn't actually have a shortage of this stuff. The only thing that's broken down is that we can't get it into the stores fast enough to keep up with the sharp and artificial increase in demand. People aren't suddenly using more toilet paper. They don't need more toilet paper. And yet, they're buying it like it's going extinct. So no, it's not logical. Hoarding never is. Hoarding behavior is never about actually stocking up on critical things. It's about going way above and beyond what's needed or even understandable. So you end up with 20 years worth of newspapers and magazines or a house full of garbage or an entire garage full of toilet paper. If this was just an American phenomenon, I'd point out that North Americans are kind of hoardery people to begin with. People in this region of the world have a lot of stuff. It's very typical here to have a garage so full of stuff that you can't fit your car in there anymore. The storage unit business is booming as people with houses, multiple bedroom houses, and two car garages need to rent extra space for all their stuff. And they hang on to that stuff for years, often not even knowing what they have anymore. So obviously, this is a popular soothing behavior around here. And where there's soothing, there's fear. But even in countries where people have small apartments, no garages, and no storage units where hoarding isn't really a thing at all, there's still the hoarding of toilet paper. So obviously, we need to look at the bigger picture. Something is being soothed. But what exactly? The hoarding of toilet paper isn't actually a new thing. It's happened before, several times. In 1973, for example, Americans were already worrying about limited supplies of products like gasoline, electricity, and um, onions. A government press release warning of a potential shortage in toilet paper led to a lot of press coverage, but no outright panic buying until Johnny Carson, a famous late night television talk show host at the time, joked about it during his opening monologue. Instead of laughing, people took it seriously and began to hoard toilet paper. Thanks, Johnny. So obviously toilet paper is somehow linked to some kind of primal fear or soothing in most humans, even though no caveman or woman ever had access to this stuff. Even younger generations who may never have experienced any kind of real shortages, as my grandparents did after World War II, for example, feel safer with a large supply of the old TP. So why toilet paper of all things? Well, I have a theory. 
And I'd like to thank my good friend and powerhouse energy teacher, Tina Ananda, for sharing her insights with me on this as well. So here it is. Again, we can acknowledge that generally hoarding is a response to fear. Well, fear is very prevalent in our world right now for obvious reasons. People are getting sick and some are dying. Many people can't work right now. We're worried about our loved ones. We don't know what's going to happen, how bad it will get or how long it will last. Will the economy collapse? Will we survive? Are we going to be okay? These aren't just fears. They're existential fears. This is about survival. Now, if you know anything about chakras, the major energy centers in the body, this next bit will make a lot of sense to you. If you're not familiar with chakras, I cannot fully explain them in this video because that's a huge topic. Just know that they're the major energy centers in the body through which your energy flows. There are seven major chakras along your spine, and these regulate the flow and of the spiritual energy throughout your body, with each chakra being responsible for a different area of your body, as well as different types of beliefs. Now, many teachers will describe these energy centers as spinning discs or wheels, but for me, it's all about the frequencies. Chakras are programmed to hold certain frequencies. When these frequencies are all perfectly balanced, the human body and energy body are also in balance. This means there's perfect health, strength, and spiritual clarity. You feel good physically, emotionally, and spiritually. When the frequencies are off or not balanced, chakras can distort the incoming and outgoing energies, and the system, your body and energy body, will suffer as a result. This can create emotional pain as well as physical illness. So chakras are kind of important. The first, or root chakra, sits at the base of your spine. There's no politically correct way to say this, so I'm just going to go for it. If you wanted to point directly at the root chakra, you'd be pretty much pointing at your perineum or taint. You know, the area between your genitals and your butthole. That's the area that houses the root chakra. Your root chakra is related to your feelings of safety and security, particularly existential safety and security. In other words, whenever we're talking about survival, the root chakra is going to be involved. And since this crisis is bringing up survival fears in everyone, we've got a whole lot of root chakras having issues. When there's fear, it means that the frequency of the root chakra is not balanced. It's a bit out of whack. Now, Chakras aren't just connected to certain fears or beliefs, they're also connected to the surrounding body parts. And what's right next to the perineum? As already mentioned, the butthole. And what do we do with the butthole? We go to the bathroom. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's a total oversimplification of the root chakra, you'd be right. But don't worry, I'm not done, and I promise it will make sense. Now, because of this connection between safety and the lower part of the body, it makes sense that we would all have some basic representations in common. For example, for most people, soiling oneself would represent pretty much the ultimate, at least close to the ultimate way of losing control. Dying is always number one, obviously. But we know that we can't control death, so we look for any other way to gain control that will soothe that root chakra. And that's where toilet paper comes in. We're afraid of being out of control. Even though shitting our pants isn't really a logical thing to be afraid of in this situation, we're fearing for our lives, our safety, and our future. There's an existential fear that's kicking off our root chakras and needs to be soothed. And universally, we want to soothe this by controlling a process directly related to that area of the body. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we're hoarding and why we're specifically hoarding toilet paper. So now that we've explored the cause, is there anything that we can do about it? Well, yeah, several things actually. The first and most important thing that you can do is to be aware of your own fears. Explore them. Don't suppress your feelings. Unexplored and unexpressed fears lead to soothing behaviors, like hoarding. So face your fears. Talk them through with your partner or journal them out. Expressing them in some way will help you to get clarity. The most important thing, however, is that you allow yourself to feel the fear. Don't just talk about it, experience it. That's what gets the energy moving and will allow your chakra to return to balance. Number two, do some grounding exercises. If you can go outside, 
Walk around barefoot in grass or dirt. Literally feel the earth beneath your feet. Do this consciously. Be in the moment and connect. Or, and you can do this anywhere, imagine your feet growing roots which dig deep into the earth, all the way to the center of the earth. Feel yourself burrowing deeper into the rich, dark soil and into the solid rock. Let it steady you. If you're ever feeling really wiggy and perhaps dissociated from reality, which is somewhat normal when you're waking up, take a shower. Running water can help you to ground as well, which will cut through that fog. Number three, be aware that fear is contagious. So is love, but fear is more contagious. This means that when you go to the store and you see the toilet paper aisle empty and you see people buying way more than they need, it can easily get you to hoard too. Now you're not just afraid of dying or getting sick, you're afraid of the effects of other people's actions. Watching others panic buying can make you question if you're insane for not doing the same thing. Will you be left behind with a cupboard devoid of food or toilet paper but full of the moral high ground? Stay strong and remind yourself that you manifest your own reality. So why would you manifest scarcity? There's plenty of supply. The shelves will be restocked and online stores are also available. There's no shortage of goods, only a blip in the supply chain. And there's more, much more on the way. Supermarkets aren't worried. In fact, they're having a ball. Number four, think of others. Hoarding is a survival behavior and it actually leads to artificial scarcity. And that, as we discovered, leads to more hoarding. It becomes a vicious cycle. But hoarding is also incredibly selfish because ultimately what a hoarder is saying is that they'd rather have much, much more than they need, often more than they could ever use, than let someone else have even a little. It doesn't matter if that other person actually needs that little bit. Now, you can't have two rolls of toilet paper. I need all 2,000 of mine. But what if you're the one who can't get what they need because someone else hoarded? Now you might be tempted to get angry at the others who are hoarding. After all, if they were doing it, no one would have to, right? Well, wrong. Remember that you create your own reality. So you can live in a survival reality where it's every man, woman, and child for themselves, or you can live in a reality where there's plenty. It's your choice. What you can't do is hoard just in case. In other words, act like there's scarcity and still experience a plentiful reality. You either live here or you don't. Don't use the behavior of others to determine which reality you have to live in. It's your choice, but you can't hedge your bets. You can't half-ass this. Decide which reality you're in and be there as much as you can. Choose it over and over again. Feel the abundance. You have what you need. You have plenty. It'll be all right. I hope that you enjoyed my little dissection of why people are so prone to hoarding toilet paper these days. Do you agree with my theories? If not, what do you think the cause is? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, hit that like button. And don't forget that we opened up a positive law of attraction based coronavirus group on Facebook last week and it's already become an incredible place. We share funny memes and positive stories allowing us to see the best of humanity. But it's also a space where you can express your emotions safely and get whatever help you need, from cyber hugs to some LOA advice. Not only do we have hundreds of like-minded members in the group, but I've also asked my team of coaches and students to come into the group and support it with, with love and light. If you haven't yet joined the group, why not check us out? I'll post the link in the description below or right below the video if you're watching this on my blog. Until next time, I'm Melody Fletcher. Hang in there and thank you for bringing your light to the world.